All right, guys, sorry about the wind, but I got to do the first part of this outside because I got to do it in the truck. The rest I can do outside. But <clears throat> today, finally installing AC on the Toyota pickup and uh, finally got everything together. And I'm just going to go over a parts overview on what you need to swap it over. Um, if you have a donor truck from a junkyard, you find somebody parting one out, or you find a listing on eBay with a conversion kit, good for you. Um, you can buy that kit and everything should be in there if the seller is uh, of any trustworthiness. Or you could be like me and for a constant month message a seller back and forth telling them that they have their listing listed wrong on eBay and it won't let you check out because you don't have a shipper so it can't calculate shipping even though they already gave me a shipping quote um, but keeps on referring back to eBay saying it's eBay's fault so I guess he doesn't want to, my uh, roughly a thousand dollars to buy the conversion kit and it's still for sale uh, as is everything else in the store because you can't buy any of it anyway small rant over I bought all this stuff individually. I think I actually came out a little bit under uh, if I don't count all the extra stuff that I bought on top of it. But anyway, I got a used condenser because it has all of the little bracketry and bolts and everything I need on it already. So I don't have to go and try and find all of these bushings and mounts and stuff. It's all here. Uh, this is stuff that I bought aftermarket. I didn't know which ones I need. They list two lines from the condenser, from the condenser to the pump, uh, compressor I mean. So, depending on if it's dealer installed or factory installed. So I just bought one of each. And then the suction line is the same, or the, the line going to the firewall to the evaporator is the same. So I, I kept, I just bought that one line, bought the other two lines, and I'll just see which one fit. Those are aftermarket. You can find those anywhere. These are two of the hard lines. This line right here, there's the part number. This line goes from the firewall, from the evaporator, all the way up to the condenser, and then it joins with this line and goes from one side of the condenser goes across the condenser and then bolts in to the uh, receiver dryer right here. So these are two hard lines that you can still get new from Toyota. Uh, these might be hard to find if you can't, you know, if you can't find a donor vehicle, these might be kind of hard to find. Another thing is, I went ahead and bought a receiver dryer so I could get the bracket off of it, but I also found a new bracket, so I bought a new bracket. So this is a new bracket for the receiver dryer. I bought a, a new receiver dryer, so that's another aftermarket. These are the only two aftermarket pieces I bought. The receiver dryer and the suction and discharge lines. Everything else is either new factory or used factory. This right here, is another line. This goes from the condenser to the other side of the uh, receiver dryer. And then also the AC switch. That's the other thing I got used. AC switch. I got an O-ring kit. I got my uh, idle up switch, which you need for both power steering and for AC. So I got to put this on and connect my power steering to it. Uh, you cannot find this new. It is discontinued. I did buy one. And you can make this one work by putting a T-fitting on this big port. And you can tee it off uh, if you need both of them. Like if you have power steering and, and AC, this one should work. You just have to tee off one of the fittings. But uh, this one right here has two big fittings. One for the AC, one for the power steering. Then you need your fittings, your high pressure and low pressure R12 to 134 fittings. Uh, low side. There's a high side. 
I got compressor bolts. I got these from uh, 22RE Performance. I believe is the website. Um, I got these from 22RE Performance on the website. This is the AC pulley for the tensioner along with the tensioner bolt and a new AC compressor bracket because all the ones were sold out on eBay when I finally bought it. This is the idle up solenoid for the AC. This just bolts onto the rocker cover. And here's the part number. Then I have a whole bunch of assortment of bolts, nuts, clips. Uh, that clip goes on the condenser. This clip holds those hard lines. Uh, this is a uh, new one of these lines for the evaporator if I need it. For the evaporator box if I need it. Here's all those uh, clips for the lines. And here's a little clip for the radiator. Um, then here is going to be the hardest part for you to find if you don't have a donor vehicle is an 89 to 95 pickup keyword pickup you cannot get a forerunner evaporator box for the pickup they will not fit they're too big so this is the evaporator box complete evaporator box with the evaporator with that short line that I showed you with the switch I do have another switch if I need it and it also has the AC amplifier what they call it it's what controls your RPM and everything else it's got the plug my plug is slightly different I'll get into that, but because mine is a late model 94, it is supposed to be a 134A system. Late model 94 and 95 are 134A systems, and this plug is different. Uh, the pins are the same, and the plug spacing looks the same, but there is an extra set of uh, blank pins to the side, so I should be able to cut half of this connector off and still be able to use it. I've already went through the wiring diagrams for a 93 model and a 95 model and every single one of these pins and wires do the exact same thing both on the R12 system and the 134 system so if you got a 94 late model or a 95 it is not the end of the world if you can only find a 93 to 98 to 89 evaporator box because the pin out is the exact same I've already I've already traced the wiring diagrams on that that is like gold right there. That's that's kind of hard to find. I was lucky to get this one, and I found another one, actually, and I went ahead and bought it because it looks in better shape than this one if I end up having problems. But and here are the compressors. This is another thing that's going to be kind of hard to find. This is a 94 and 95 R134A compressor this is an 89 to 93 R12 compressor these ports are not the same size I think with some thicker aftermarket o-rings those AC lines that I have would fit this compressor with no problems However, I wanted to make sure, so I went ahead and bought this one. I'm going to swap this manifold to this compressor, so any mineral oil left in this won't really have that big of a deal. It's already got the oil correct for this one. Um, and these have to be for a four-cylinder. It's got to be an 89 to 93 slash 94 R12 or you can go 134, but I don't know if these are going to seal correctly. The, the hoses that I have are very loose in these two ports um, for, the one th for the 134 system. 
but when I put them in these ports on the R12, they fit fine and snug. So, best bet is to get an 89 to 93 slash 94 R12 compressor, but it has to be for the 22RE. The six cylinder compressors will not fit because the bracket goes out in a different direction. And you can't just buy an aftermarket compressor. If you go and try to find an aftermarket compressor, they do not come with these top pieces. These manifolds is what they call them. So you can go and spend a couple hundred dollars on a compressor or go to, go to the, uh, and buy a brand new one uh, which from the dealer, which still might not even come with this, and they won't come with this. So you'll have a couple hundred dollar new compressor and you still can't use it because this manifold doesn't come with it. And these manifolds, as far as I know, I cannot find them anywhere. So both that and this are probably going to be the hardest things to find. And you got to make sure it is not a ribbed belt. There is a Toyota T100 that was, you know, in the 90s. The T100s won't fit either because A, it's a ribbed belt, and B, this is actually different. I actually have another compressor that I bought that was a T100 that was not listed as a T100. So, that's kind of the gist. Um, it's easier to find the R12 stuff because there was more R12 systems out there than the 134 systems. Um, and everything here besides this is from an R12 system. It really doesn't matter too much. Um, the lines and stuff are bigger, you know, more capacity uh, with the 134 system because, they're, you know, the R 134 systems take bigger, more pressure. But, uh, yeah, so that's pretty much the list of stuff you need. Um, and before the storm rolls in, I want to go ahead and get this mounted inside so I can drive the truck in the garage. But yeah, this is a, a pretty big introduction because there's a lot of parts here. But I'm going to go ahead and start installing this. Oh, and most of this stuff's already taken out, but there's a bolt uh, screw down here. There's a screw up here. Screw a bolt right here that corresponds with there, there, and I think in here, there, and there. And then your glove box should pull out, and right here, this is your AC delete box. There's a uh, like uh, 10 millimeter, I think it's 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter there, 10 millimeter down there, right there, and then up there. And this should pull out, and then you, uh, the plug that you plug all your wiring into is right here, and you can see it is slightly different. However, these two right here are not populated. So I should be able to open that connector up and plug it straight in here and use this. Um, this was, this wiring harness was like taped up here, like inside the dash. So I just had to untape it and pull it down. Every one of these uh, 89 to 94 trucks should have this somewhere uh, up here in the dash. Uh, if you have a 93 in back, it's probably going to look, it's probably going to have these two wires right here, not non-existent. Uh, but I think the 94s and up has this full connector. So I'm going to go ahead and take this uh, heater, box, heater box out and I'll be back. And here's the AC block up. Uh, block off, bypass, delete, whatever you want to call it. And then right behind there, right there, and right there, the holes for the AC. So I'm going to go ahead and pull those out. Alright guys, this is what I did to the connector. Like I said uh, I was going to do, I cut this side of the connector off where the extra pin, where the extra pin holes, but no pins are on this one, unless you have an automatic. Uh, I think the automatics and V6s use these. Maybe it's just the V6s, but these two holes are because this is a manual. It's fine, uh, but if you have a, uh, I know for a fact if you have the V6, and maybe if you have the auto, these other two pins are occupied for something. I don't know what, but 
you might might not need it anyway this does slip in there now so all I'm gonna do now is make sure the make sure these ends are cleaned out and stick them through the hole and then mount up all my bolt holes all right got the box in <clears throat> there's an extra bolt hole down there <clears throat> there's a nut up here that I don't have anything on but there's a nut right there the bolt hole for this side right here is broken that's where that tabs broken and also down here there's another plug for the drain I don't have the drain uh, so I'm gonna have to get a hose which I think I have a hose somewhere here which I need to find uh, but I think I have a hose here that will fit that and I can push that outside because uh, you don't want that draining inside there is a bolt hole down there that I put in the bolt way back there that I put in hardest thing is actually getting it to push through the firewall I had everything lined up but I still had to move it up and down push it move it up and down push it make sure that uh, stud up there was lined up and I just had to keep on pushing and hoping and it, it's in but I'm able to get it in I did find a little hole right here so I taped it up I also cleaned out a bunch of I think there was a, a mouse nest or something in it so I got as much of that stuff out as I could I didn't feel like splitting the box especially since it already started raining a little bit so my stuff in the back is wet but uh, yeah now that I have that in and I have it plugged up and it's actually plugged up and it's snapped in so it actually won't come out I'm gonna go ahead snap this on the box so that's all plugged in it's all snapped in where it should be so now I'm gonna move some of this stuff over I'm gonna pull it in the garage so that way when the rain actually does come and the hard rain comes because it's supposed to storm pretty good I won't get caught in it all right next thing I'm gonna do is install my condenser I'm gonna take this bracket off uh, you would usually have to take the grill off which I guess I think the grill is literally just pushed in with clips so I assume you can just pull it off don't know because I don't have one yet and I hope this fits because my bumper is all messed up and this is messed up too I even I ordered another one of these this one's all mangled so uh, there's a 10 millimeter here a 10 millimeter here and then 10 millimeter under here which you might be able to get to all of it fine but of course mine's all mangled so I don't know what you're supposed to be able to get to and what you're not but I'm going to go ahead and take this stuff off move my power steering cooler out of the way and start mocking everything up all right fast forward some time one bumper remover later you might not have to remove your bumper if yours hasn't been wrecked but mine's been wrecked and I couldn't slide the condenser between the bumper and the grill I didn't have enough room to get it down enough and pushed up you might want to go ahead and remove your bumper it's fairly easy there's, there's two uh, 14 millimeters right here and then coming up through the fender well right here there is a 10 millimeter or 12 millimeter 10 or 12 I think it's 12 coming through this side on both sides go ahead and take those off and you uh, disconnect the lights and then it comes right off now this condenser for these bushings right here it came with a nut and a bolt however I don't know when this changed but it looks like the 94's and 95's have the holes right here already pre-threaded and if they're not pre-threaded these cut 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 threads so those go through here on both sides there's a cutout right there in the condenser that actually goes for for this piece which goes right here and uh, yeah I had to do a little surgery on this one because the bolt decided to snap so I drilled out the center of it and was actually able to pull it out and the threads are actually still good and these are uh, M6 by ones so if you mess up any of these you know hood 
latch bolts or, or support bolts. They're M6 by one. Uh, so yeah, the radiator or condenser mounts like this. These bushings right here, there is a hole back there and also over here. And you have to put a nut and a bolt through the back side on this little wing, on these winglets to mount those. And uh, I need to keep massaging this bar because it keeps rubbing right here a little too close for comfort. I think it uh, it will actually rub through. So I'm going to go ahead and continue massaging this, see if I can get this to stay out. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and mount this up, which is, again, it's fairly easy. There's two bolts here. Some of them, I'm guessing you might need the bolt and the nut. And then these are just little L, L brackets that uh, go through right there and right there. All right, condensers now all bolted down there and then back here. There's the bolt right there. There, under the hat. And then the bolt right here. It helps if you take out the fresh air tube, get some more room. Um, next, I think I'm gonna start mounting the hard lines. Looks like one of the bolt holes is already there for one of the mounts. And then one of the other mounts clips to the radiator right there. And I think there might be another mount that goes somewhere below the battery or something. I have to figure out where the, uh, the line travels. Um, to be honest, this thing doesn't actually really have a battery tray. I don't know if it's supposed to have a tray or if it just sits on the fender, but I don't know if it bolts to the battery tray or not. But uh, I got three of those clamps. Uh, I think it called for three clamps. Uh, maybe it just called. Maybe it just called for two clamps, and I just ordered an extra one. But uh, so yeah, um, I'm gonna go ahead. and I think I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna lay the line down, see where it goes. All right, things expanded a little bit. Took the battery out. So I uh, took the reservoir, just one bolt, took the reservoir, moved it over. While I'm trying to figure out the routing of these hard lines, I need to mount both the hard line that goes here and the hard line that goes across. So I need to mount this, the uh, receiver dryer, so I can figure out, you know, where all these wires, where all these lines need to be bent. I'm pretty sure this line is supposed to go on top of the fender and bolt in right there. And then there's another and then it goes behind this wiring harness, the battery wiring harness right here. And then there's another bolt somewhere right here where those uh, clamps go that I have to hold the hold it in place. And then another clamp goes here that holds all these together. But before I start bending the hard lines or bending the evaporator lines, I want to make sure I have everything where it needs to be because I don't want to be bending these a lot and break one because while you can still get this line, get this line now, how long is it going to be available? Same thing with this line across the front. How long is it going to be available? So, I'd like to get everything where it needs to be, where I won't have any rub through and whatnot. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's going to be interesting to do. So, uh, over here in the corner, which is why I removed the reservoir, you have the uh, receiver dryer. It goes through these two holes right here. And then you just put nuts on the back side. Alright, fast forward some time. And I've eaten. Took about an hour and a half or so break. Went out, eat, ate, came back. And uh, I got all my lines put down. And I wish that bug would shut up. It's getting really annoying. But got that uh, the line is attached to the evaporator comes down over here there's that clamp and a bolt and I'll get those part numbers in a second then it goes down here it goes behind the battery cable goes around there is a hole threaded hole down there put that bolt in uh, put that clamp around it it comes up through here 
comes around over here and stops and then attaches to, to the other line that goes through. I got that clamped on. And then this is where this is. I still might have to adjust this in or out because um, it may or may not hit the bumper. I don't know yet. But honestly, I'm probably just going to get the angle grinder out and cut through the bumper if it hits the bumper because this bumper is bent to hell. So it's possible that it hits this bumper, but it won't hit, you know, uh, a bumper that's not damaged. But anyway, I got that going around. This is kind of how it's supposed to look. It's clamped there. It goes down. And this light's horrible. And it goes over, and it goes in, and then it kind of angles up. Our steering line's on the way. Kind of angles up. There's a clip right here. Uh, if I have that part number, if I remember which bag it's in, I'll show you. It goes up here, bolts down there, and then this little piece bolts there, and bolts goes there. That's all tight. I put an ounce of oil in the receiver dryer. Make sure, because uh, this is, there's probably nothing left in these in these systems uh, because if you buy the system it's probably been open for a minute uh, but either way if you're going from an R12 system highly recommend get ester oil because this oil is compatible with residue from R12 it won't gunk up or anything so I will be putting about an ounce in the condenser and then the compressors, I think, are completely empty. So I'm going to put two pounds or two ounces in the compressor itself because I'm pretty sure they're completely empty. They've, they've been open for who knows how long. Plus, they were shipped. Uh, so there's like nothing left in them. <clears throat> so uh, the capacity of oil for a retrofit is 100 cc or just over four ounces. Uh, so the whole system needs to have four ounces of oil in it. So, ounce in there, ounce in here, two ounces in the compressor, and then, uh, you know, go from there. You can put a little bit more in it when you charge it, but it's a just over four ounces, like 4.1 ounces total. But anyway, I have all that tight, all that bent. I did have to manipulate this, bend it. I had to manipulate down here where it went into the evaporator. I had to bend the evaporator hose up, which was probably bent. They looked like they were bent. They weren't coming straight out. They were kind of limping down. So I kind of fit these hoses, kind of tweaked it here, tweaked it there. Um, if these hoses are new in a bag, you're going to have to tweak the hoses somewhat, or lines somewhat. But anyway, I got all this stuff tight. Um, this down here was kind of weird because this whole part of the header panel right here is kind of bent back down there and I think it's kind of tweaked right here because it was interesting trying to get those in but anyway the two bolts that go into the top of the receiver dryer are these bolts right here 93385-1625 well, these, these, here, here's the clamps the clamps, the three clamps. Here's the clamps. And here are those bolts for there, there, and also there. And the next thing I'm going to do, so I'm probably on I'm going to put the hood latch back. But I'm going to take the intake off right here so I can mount the compressor. I will show you where the compressor line uh, plug is. It should be taped up against the harness, but I'll get to that in a second. All right, all right. Here, here's the compressor wire. It's taped up to this uh, temperature sensor. It looks like, and then down here, here's the bolt holes. Down here at the bottom, right there, there's a grounding bolt. It, that's one of the mounting locations. Then up, skip this one, that's actually not a mounting bolt, but up here, that is a mounting location. That and that have nothing in it, so this one up here, you're going to have to take the bolt, the mounting bolt, uh, you know, pocket screwdriver, 
knock out most of the dirt and then go in and out with a bolt to clear the rest of the dirt out. So it's that bolt and that bolt. The bolt that comes out of the ground is too short, so if you don't have any bolts, you will have to get two bolts, one for the bottom, one for the top. The other bolts are this front cover bolt, that front cover bolt, and that front cover bolt. That's what the compressor mounts to. Here's my compressor bracket, front cover bolt, front cover bolt, front cover bolt, main bolt, or side bolt, side bolt. If you need the part number for the bolts that go into the side, here's the bolt, here's the part number for the bolts that go in the side. They are long bolts because that bracket's pretty thick. This is the bolt that holds the grounding strap originally so this is too short to even go through the bracket so and this is the bolt that goes through the bracket so uh, yeah I'm gonna go ahead and take these uh, the bolts out of the front uh, here here and here the ones that I just showed you that one that one and that one and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, mount the bracket. But before I mount the bracket, i got to get the idler, idler pulley on, which is right here. The pulley part number, that's the pulley part number. I do not know the part number for these. Uh, this is the actual, the, what the, what the uh, pulleys ride, ride along, both for the power steering and the AC, but I do not have this part number. Um, I bought these from uh, 22RE Performance or Performance22RE.com, whatever it is, and uh, these were just listed as as the uh, the bolt. But then you also have the pulley, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this all together, and I'll come back. Well, I'm pretty much at a stopping point for the night. Um, I would have liked to get this all done, but it's what I thought. The, the bolts that go in the front cover, these two uh, M10 by 125 and this one M8 by 125, they are just long enough without the compressor bracket. When you put the compressor bracket in, there is they don't even thread in at all. If they threaded in a couple threads, I would tighten it up and then continue on and then uh, get to where I need to get to. But uh, as far as mounting the compressor, that's it. I think I'm going to go ahead and put the valve and wire all this stuff up and then wire my uh, power steering pump up to it so all that's done. But uh, as far as anything else, I don't have any bolts at the house. I do have some M8s. I have this one that goes in and that's about how far it tightens down but then it sticks out about another you know this much so I would have to put a bunch of washers on it but uh, don't really want to do that M8 and M10 uh, by 125 should be able to find those locally. Um, I knew there was some bolts that I tried to buy that were discontinued, and that was these bolts, the two M8s and the one M10, because I tried to get all the bolts for this bracket, but the bolts that go in the front cover are discontinued. Um, I would have liked to buy a used bracket with the bolts, but by the time I actually started ordering the AC stuff, the brackets that I saw that had the bolts were sold out. And, um, yeah, so uh, that didn't work out. And I thought I had all the bolts, but I had forgotten that there was a couple bolts that I couldn't get that were discontinued. And I kind of threw it in the back of my mind going, yeah, I have enough bolts, I should be able to get them to work didn't realize it was these front cover bolts so uh, 
I'm gonna have to stop for the night get up tomorrow and go bolt hunting and then when I get bolts even if I have to stack it up with washers I can get bolts I can tighten them down I can keep a lookout online for a used bracket that has the factory bolts and then I can get those bolts later on but um, yeah these bolts go and then this way are tight though so yeah what I'm gonna do What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and uh, take these, uh, take that valve that I have, which here's the plug right here, which this plug was taped up down here, but here's the plug right here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put that on there, and there's a plug, a block off plug right here for that little valve. I'm going to go ahead and take this block off plug out and put that valve in it. And I'll come back and show you what all this looks like and what the routing and stuff looks like. All right, I got all the new vacuum lines ran. <clears throat> got the idle up uh, valve or idle up diaphragm, and then I got the idle up valve. Now this part that comes at the bottom goes over to this piece going on the side, right there. And then this piece going through the side goes down through here on the bottom. There's a little tab on the bottom. And then this big port on the side comes back to before the throttle body. And then as far as the power steering, if you have power steering, the one on the far side, I don't honestly I don't think it really matters. But that it goes up and into the port other big port on the side and then the other port goes directly into the intake and then the plug for the solenoid uh, idle up solenoid I have taped up right here but it was taped up down in this valley right here um, I'm not going to connect it right now because they're part of one of the wires That black wire is actually slightly rubbed through from this little rubber sheath. So I forgot to get some liquid electrical tape. I'm going to just put it, put a dab on that and then I'll plug it up uh, tomorrow after I go and get the bolts. Alright, after spending a couple of hours running around town, <coughs> finally got the bolts I need. This this uh, is a M10 by 125. I think I already said that. Uh, this is like a 40 or 50 millimeter, whatever. Found M10 by 125 by 75. And then this was an M8 by 125, like I said. And I got both a 70 and a 50. I'm pretty sure the 50 should be fine. So there's, there's the 50. And then once you stack washers and stuff on it. It should be fine. If not, I went ahead and got an M10 by 70, which was the next direct size, which is way too big. If I, if I would have thought about it, I actually, I think the other places I went had some other M10s. Eh, it should be fine, because it only goes on that much thread. So when you put this in here, I hope that's I hope that's right. If not, I got the M70 and I got a bunch of washers I can stack up. But yeah, I really should have got an M. Uh, I think there was like a 60, maybe a 65 millimeter or 70 millimeter. I should have got I should have got a 70. Anyway, uh, yeah, this was uh, I went to Lowe's or excuse me, I went to AutoZone. O'Reilly's, Tractor Supply, and Lowe's. I got these at AutoZone. I got one of these at Tractor Supply. And everything else I got at Lowe's. Because they only had one of these. I'm, I'm, it's going to suck if this actually isn't long enough. Uh, because, anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and get this tightened back down. And then we'll go from there. Alright, now that I got all that tightened down and done. I can come back here and start modifying these. <coughs> I might have mentioned in the beginning of the video, 
I'm going to use the 134 compressor, but I'm going to take, you know, the R12 um, manifold off, swap the manifolds over. It creates a little bit of work for me, but uh, the 134 compressors, you know, uh, first of all, they're designed for 134, so they can actually take a little bit more uh, pressure. Um, a lot of the times when you swap from R12 to 134, you take an old R12 compressor that's used to run in a certain pressure, and then you switch it over to 134, and the 134 runs at higher pressure, uh, which is why you don't charge it as much but it can still blow the compressor up. So I'm gonna swap the stuff over. Uh, I got the gasket kit right here. Here's a gasket kit. Gasket, this gasket right here goes under here. Uh, the charge is 700 cc when you're doing the conversion and that comes up to just over 24 ounces. So uh, I got two cans of uh, 134 I'm gonna use and then it should work. Uh, even without that extra, you know, half ounce, half half ounce or whatever. All right, <clears throat> there it is. There's a 134 compressor. There's the R12 compressor. They're fairly similar. This one has a bigger opening here than here. This one's all built in, but uh, the manifolds are, you know, fairly similar. Set where the ports go. Now. These are both empty of oil. I've already took them and spun them around multiple times. So, two ounces in here. I have this, uh, you know, Delsum <laughs> measuring thing. It goes to 10 milliliters. 30 milliliters is a very, very close to an ounce. So I'm going to put uh, six of these in there. That would be around two ounces, a little bit over, which is fine because... It takes a little bit over four ounces, so that's two here, two in the receiver dryer, or one in the receiver dryer, and then one in the uh, condenser. All right, so, and like I said, here's my seal, here's my seal kit. So, uh, yeah, we're going to take this seal out, and then I'm going to fill it up, put the seal back on, then put the R12 cap on here, tighten it back down. Don't know the torque specs, but... You know, it's an O-ring seal, so it doesn't have to be too much. And there we go. One 134 compressor with a uh, R12 top. And then R12 with 134 top. I'll just keep this as a backup. Um, I really would like to switch the, the clutch over because this plug is nice, not marred up. This plug is seen better days. But hopefully it still plugs up and everything. Um, but yeah, now I can actually put these on while I'm at it, my, uh, uh, valves and stuff, and the oil in that is a little bit green because I did have some, uh, dye, some, uh, some dye left over from doing a bunch of AC jobs and leak, leak down tests and stuff at work. You never get all the dye out of, out of the little bottles, so you you keep all those bottles, and then eventually you can you can you know fill up one bottle with a bunch of leftovers from a bunch of other stuff. So uh, that's why that's green. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and put these on. A uh, one tip I'll give you: anytime you do anything with AC, never ever ever put any of the gaskets or seals together dry. Always, always, always get some AC oil, whatever AC oil you have, or whatever AC oil your system takes, and put it on the seal or the O-ring. You don't want to put the O-ring seals on dry in an AC system. All right, got the adapters on here, and I don't know if I like those adapters. I thought these adapters let you keep the original Schrader valve inside, and then when you press this Schrader down, it presses the other Schrader down. Well, that's not how it works. When you st try to screw this on, it immediately pushes the Schrader valve down, and it looks like there's no way to even, you know, have the old Schrader valve in there. So, uh, hopefully these don't leak. Um, 
Yeah, I really hope these don't leak. They're four seasons, so, you know, it's a, it's a uh, very common brand, so if these leak, I might have to uh, figure out some other options. Alrighty, I skipped ahead just a little bit. I got the pump mounted, got the pump plugged in. I also went and plugged the, the solenoid up. I did have to take the seal out of this uh, pigtail because it was hard as a rock and would not slide into the solenoid, so I'm gonna have to get another another pigtail. Um, get another uh, pigtail that has a fresh seal in it. The seal for that plugs into the compressor uh, looked like it was already kind of split, but I put a little lube in that one and it slipped right in. That one would not slip in no matter what I did. The seal was hard as a rock. That one was a little bit softer. <sighs> I got the compressor mounted, bolted up, plugged in. I got the line tightened down, goes to the firewall. I did have to take this uh, charcoal canister off. I took the bolt off here, bolt off back there, then the bolt right here for the line off. I took this line right here, pulled it off, and I was able to move this forward just enough where I could get a wrench on the evaporator, and then I could get a crescent wrench, an adjustable wrench, on the line. And I had to do that because there was no other way to do that. <coughs> uh, the bolts down here, just be patient. Uh, it would probably be easier to put the condenser line in first and then put the evaporator line in, but I put the evaporator line in, tighten it down here, then put the condenser line in, tighten it down here, and then tighten down the condenser here, and then the uh, evaporator there. Everything's all good. Lube the O-rings, lube the hole that it goes in, and just tighten it down. Hopefully these two seem like they're going to seal good. The O-rings fit in fairly decent. This one, I don't know. Uh, I don't know yet. Um, I did use, I don't remember which line I used. Uh, this, uh, yeah, I don't remember which line I used, uh, whether it was for dealer installed or non-dealer installed. That's just something you're going to have to figure out. Um, the other line went out f straighter and made this arch even worse. This arch is terrible. Um, this line is, the other line was kinked in the other hose basically. This one isn't kinked, but it's, it's, it's not, I don't like how that jumps over like that, but I guess it is what it is. This line right here is probably gonna be hitting the battery. Actually, I know for a fact it's gonna hit the battery. I might need to, <laughs> might need to take that stuff back off and twist the line a little bit. Um, but yeah. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put the battery back in first, make sure I can get that in. If not, <laughs> rearrange this stuff so I can get the battery in. And then I'm going to connect the ports to uh, my vacuum pump that I have. And I'm going to vacuum it down for 30 minutes. Let it just vacuum for 30 minutes. Turn the vacuum off, let it sit for 10 minutes, see if it holds vacuum. Alright, I got the belt on, got the belt tight. Uh, all you do is you use that adjuster slider down there that looks just like this but you also have to loosen this nut up in the front so you just take that it's a 14 millimeter you loosen it up and then that's also a 14 millimeter and then you just loosen it or tighten it and the pulley moves since this is a brand new belt I pretty much had to almost take the pulley off the threads to get the belt to slide on and, but then it tightened down a whole lot as you can see so I got the belt on, now I got my <coughs> manifold set with my vacuum pump. I got those all hooked up and tightened down to the ports. There's one of them, the other one's hiding back there. Now all I do, like I said, I'm going to vacuum it for about 30 minutes. This probably doesn't apply to anybody because you're probably going to put this on and go to a shop and get them to charge it. but. I'm not going to go into detail about all this either, but I am, you know, I'll show you because you can rent this and you can rent this from the auto parts store. I happen to own, own them because I was doing, before I worked at a shop, I uh, did the AC on my Yukon all by myself because it was fairly easy. It takes exactly three cans of Freon and uh, I went did, and did that a couple times because I had a couple leaks, so I had to go through and replace pretty much the entire system in that thing. Anyway, so... These should be closed, so I'm pretty sure tight is closed. It's going to get loud. Turn on the pump. Then you 
open the valves. And we open the valve. And it's building vacuum. And what I'm going to do. Is I'm going to let this run for 30 minutes to make sure all of the a all of the air is out of it, and b so uh, you know any oils or R12 that might be lingering in there, which I doubt there is any of it in there because all this stuff has been open. Uh, most of it's new, but the condenser and the evaporators uh, used. But I just want to make sure you know vacuum it for 30 minutes. Usually. If you were just swapping a component, you would vacuum it for 10 minutes, do a leak down for 10 minutes, and then if everything passes, you're good. But I want to make sure everything is done. All right, it's been 30 minutes. Vacuum is still where it was, so. Uh, close it. Go down here. And pump off. Still where it was, hasn't moved. I'm going to let this sit for like 10 15 minutes. Come back if it hasn't moved, then I can start charging it up. I got three cans of 134. <clears throat> All I need is a little over two. It's um, 700 cc uh, to refill on a converted system, uh, which comes out to like 24 and a half ounces. Uh, a full R12 system takes 28 ounces, and a full 94, 95, 134 system takes. 26 ounces but when I read up on the uh, conversion bulletin from Toyota and it's 700 cc on a converted system since this is like a mismatch most of it is 130 or, or R12 except for the compressor which I put the new manifold on I'm going to charge it with the 700 cc and uh, go from there I can always experiment later on at work uh, when I have a machine, I can just charge, pull back, charge, pull back, uh, and I can actually get the correct amount in it. So, I'm going to let this sit for like another 10 minutes, 13 minutes, somewhere around there, and then I'll be back. All right, it's been about 15 minutes. Gauge hasn't moved at all. So, I got my 12 ounce, should be right here in front. 12 ounce can, my new self sealing can adapter because stupid EPA changed everything. So I can charge it now. Just gonna put this down in there. Cans are already going in. Now, the rule of thumb, if you're using a manifold gauge set, always charge the low side. At work, with a machine, I charge both sides at the same time. Let's open that up, go into the system. When you do these, it's a good idea to shake the can. Hear a bunch of stuff bubbling around. Sometimes with these cans too, you have to you actually have to start it. Sometimes with these cans, which I think that might be what I'm fixing to have to do because it's not taking anything else. Haven't even got 12 ounces in there yet. It's going in just very slowly, so. Yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and start it. I haven't used one of these uh, can in a while, so yeah. 
a lot of the times with these cans, you have to start it. So I'm going to go ahead and put this intake back on temporarily, plug up the, the sensor, and uh, come back. I'm going to start it, and I'm going to put the button in, which is one thing I forgot. Show you how to put the button in. All right. Inside, got this little blank panel right here. Just get with a pocket screwdriver or a screwdriver, pop it back, and tear it off. And you're not going to see back there, but there's a bunch of pins correspond with all these pins so take the button take the button pressure behind it and push it all the way in so I'm gonna keep the AC off for now make sure everything's out of the way up here make sure everything's out of the belt belts that's out of the way, that's out of the way, it's out of the way, all this is out of the way. Now, when you start it, do not have the high side open. Have the high side all the way closed. That, that can is not designed to handle the pressures that the high side works with. Only have the low side open and the low side open only when you have it started. Which is one reason why you charge through the low side when you're using a can. So, high side all the way closed. Low side all the way open. Can. Neutral. Clutch in. Press the clutch, e brakes on, press the AC, turn it on high, I can hear it. Surely taking a charge, you can see, you can see it slowly pulling the charge, so I'm going to sit here and this can is still quite full, I don't know, I don't know if this is the stupid EPA valve making it go slow or not, but I'm going to sit here until it takes two cans. Alright, the first can's already in, swap to the second can, what you do when you swap cans, turn the valve all the way off, wait for anything that's left in here to get sucked in, then turn the low side off and then you can change cans. Uh, one thing you can do, AC cut off, you can wait for it to cut back on. AC cut back on. What you do right here, this is your idle valve for with the AC on. So you can adjust how high you want the idle with the AC on. Um, but after putting that first can in, after having that first can in, it is already cold in here. Like, I, can, I almost can't sit in here. I got short, uh, short sleeves on. It is super cold. This center vent is like worthless though. This center vent right here is worthless. This vent, amazing. This vent, amazing. This vent over here I have turned off, but it's good. So there's something behind the dash probably to this vent that's messed up. Oh, it definitely is. I can feel everything coming out from up here. Everything's coming out up here. So I think this uh, duct is broken or something, but uh, it is cold. AC light is on. Oh yeah, this is nice. Now I can actually start driving the truck. I've been, I haven't been driving it because I've been waiting to get the AC on it. I think this, I think this can's empty now, almost. It might not take anymore. This can still has a little bit in it. 
but it's it's not wanting to take it. Uh, the AC is actually off right now. Back on. That might be all it's going to take. This can's almost empty, but it's not taking any more of it. It's supposed to be like two cans, but it's not. With as cold as it, cold as it is today, it might not take it. We'll close this up. So now the, the gauges are still reading. But nothing's coming out of the yellow hose, so that means there's moisture all on this, so that means I can take this off. So yeah, there is very little left in this can. I'm going to keep these cans in the in the truck. Uh, well, I don't need to keep, keep them in the truck because I can do anything I need at work. So now the AC is cycling, it's cycling just about how it's supposed to cycle. Condenser is warming up. A sight glass, you can't see anything in sight glass because the charge is not as high as R12, so the sight glass is technically useless. The TSB, you're supposed to actually tape over the sight glass so people don't look in it. But, I don't care. It is ice cold, like, ice, ice cold. Yeah, I guess that's it. The only thing I have to do is, uh, Disconnect my lines, put everything up, put the bumper back on it, make sure the bumper fits with this. If not, I'm going to cut the bumper. But, um, yeah, that's how you install AC on 89 or 95 Toyota pickup. Some of the Forerunners might be similar, but I think it's only like two years. And then it's still different on the inside. The evaporator box is bigger. So, uh, yeah, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.